Soyuz 32 Russian, Su-32, Union 32 was a 1979 Soviet manned space flight to the Salyut 6 space station. It was the eighth mission to and seventh successful docking at the orbiting facility. The Soyuz 32 crew was the third long-duration crew to man the space station. Cosmonauts Vladimir Lyakov and Valery Ryaman spent 175 days in space, setting a new space endurance record. Because of the failure of a visiting crew to successfully dock and the resultant decision to send an unmanned Soyuz craft as a replacement return vehicle, the Soyuz 32 crew had no visitors in the Salyut 6 space station. Topic. Crew. Topic Backup Crew Topic Mission Parameters Mass six thousand eight hundred kilograms, fifteen thousand pounds Perigee one hundred and ninety eight point four kilometres, one hundred and twenty three point three miles Apogee 274.3 kilometers 170.4 miles Inclination 51.61 degrees Period 89 94 minutes Topic Mission highlights Topic. Launch and station activation Soyuz 32 was launched with its two-man crew on 25 February 1979. The crew's main mission was to overhaul the Salyut 6 space station's systems and prepare it for further long-duration crews. They would also attempt a new record-duration flight. Soyuz 32 docked with Salyut 6 the next day, and Lyakov and Ryaman, the third long-duration crew at the station, commenced demothballing the facility which had been vacant since November. When the hatch to the station was opened, the cosmonauts smelled burnt steel, a scent Ryaman called the odor of space, the crew started routine activities and two types of medical exams. The first included daily checks of mood, their accomplishments and food intake. The second checked their psychological condition via observing their frequent communication sessions. Their cardiovascular systems were checked every 8 to 10 days, and their body masses measured. By the second week, they exercised 2.5 hours a day, averaged 3,100 calories of daily food intake with 2.5 liters of water. The orbit of the station was raised by the Soyuz craft's propulsion system the 1st of March. What the Soviets did not then report was that the Salyut station's propulsion system was having problems. Experiments included hatching quail eggs, but the chicks grew much slower than on Earth, and lacked heads. A videotape recorder was fixed 6 March using a soldering iron, the first time such repair equipment had been used in space. <laughs> Progress 5 arrives Progress 5, an unmanned supply tanker, was launched 12 March and docked with the station two days later. The crew spent four days unloading the vehicle. Supplies delivered included parts for station repair, an extra storage battery, a television monitor, a new crystal furnace to replace the old one which had broken, a gamma-ray telescope and food. A total of 300 items weighing 1,300 kilograms were delivered. The tanker also delivered 1,000 kg of propellant for the station. The Soviets revealed the propulsion problem on 16 March. They said a Salyut fuel tank was leaking fuel into the nitrogen bellows which pressurized the fuel. The station's engine systems were not affected, but valves and regulators in the pressurization system were at potential risk. Accordingly, the crew shut down the tank and used a reserve tank. 
The crew attempted to drain the leaking tank by rotating the station and succeeded by the 23rd of March, purged the tank with nitrogen and closed it off. On the same day they cleared the tank, the crew used the station's shower for the first time, wearing scuba masks to keep the water out of their eyes. A milestone was reached the 24th of March when the cosmonauts installed a television monitor which allowed a two-way television link with ground control. For the first time, cosmonauts received television pictures in space. Seeing family, instead of just hearing them, was considered to have great psychological importance, especially as longer flights were contemplated. On 30 March, Progress 5 boosted the station's orbit, then Soyuz 32 boosted the orbit again 6 April in preparation for the forthcoming Soyuz 33 crew. Progress 5 was undocked the 3rd of April and deorbited 2 days later. Topic: <laughs> Soyuz 33 mission failure. Soyuz 33 was launched the 10th of April with the 4th international crew in the Soviet Intercosmos program. Bulgarian cosmonaut Georgi Ivanov joined commander Nikolai Rukavishnikov as the craft proceeded normally towards the space station. But, as the craft approached to 1,000 meters, the engine failed and shut down after three seconds of a planned six-second burn. Rukavishnikov had to hold the instrument panel as the craft violently shook. A second firing attempt was made, but the engine shut down again, and Ryerman, observing from the station, reported an abnormal lateral glow from behind the Soyuz during the burn. Mission Control accordingly aborted the mission and told the crew to prepare to return to Earth. It was the first in-orbit failure of the Soyuz propulsion system. It was only in 1983 that the Soviets revealed how serious the situation was. The craft had a backup engine but it was feared that it may have been damaged by the main engine, potentially leaving the crew stranded with five days of supplies while it would take ten days for the orbit to decay. The station could have been moved to within 1,000 meters of the craft, but the two craft were drifting apart at 28 meters per second, and time was needed to calculate the maneuvers. In any event, four crew on the station with one malfunctioning Soyuz and a second Soyuz, Soyuz 32 with a now questionable engine it had the same type as Soyuz 33 was not considered the best option. In the end, the backup engine did fire, though for 25 seconds too long, resulting in an unusually steep trajectory and loads of 10 gigaseconds to be endured by the crew. Rukavishnikov and Ivanov were safely recovered. Topic. Progress 6 – Unmanned Soyuz launched The failure of a prestigious international mission was an embarrassment to Soviet authorities and also had a negative effect on the morale of Ryman and Lyakov, both of whom had been looking forward to receiving visitors. News of the cancellation of the Soyuz 33 flight was greeted by a series of grunts followed by the termination of all voice communication by the Salyut 6 crew. Their bad mood persisted for several days. After the Soyuz 33 failure, the station crew were stuck with a suspect craft. The Soyuz 33 craft was intended to be swapped for the Soyuz 32, but the failure called into question the reliability of Soyuz 32's main engine. Until the design was corrected and a new vehicle launched, the crew was safe on Salyut with the Soyuz usable in an emergency. The fifth international flight, scheduled for 5 June, was postponed. Lyakov and Ryman continued their station activities, including experiments intended to be carried out with the visiting crew, which had been delivered aboard the Progress 5 flight, such as one called Piran, which investigated the formation of metal whiskers on zinc crystals, and another which made multi spectral measurements of the daylight atmosphere. They were given five days off for the May Day holiday. Progress 6 was launched the 13th of May and delivered some 100 items. The Soyuz 33 engine failure did not affect the supply tanker as it differed in its design. Unloading took two days. A new navigational unit was installed, and the tanker raised the station's orbit on the 22nd of May. 
Refueling was completed by the 28th of May. More orbital adjustments were made 4 and the 5th of June, and Progress 6 was undocked the 8th of June. Soyuz 34 launched unmanned on the 6th of June, docked at the just vacated aft port of the space station on the 9th of June. The Soyuz had a new engine system, and its successful test flight gave the Salyut 6 crew a reliable return vehicle. Since the craft was unmanned, some biological samples for experiments were included on the flight. Soyuz 32 was loaded with 130 kilograms of replaced instruments, process materials, exposed film, and other items with a total weight equal to that of the two cosmonauts. On the 13th of June, it undocked and returned to Earth unmanned 295 kilometers northwest of Jaskazgan. The next day, the crew redocked Soyuz 34 at the forward port to clear the aft port for Progress 7. Topic: <laughs> Progress 7 radio telescope deployed, return to Earth. Progress 7 was launched the 28th of June and docked at Salyut 6 2 days later. It carried 1,230 kilograms of supplies including food, plants, mail and a 10-meter diameter radio telescope. The station's orbit was raised 3 and 4 July to a 399 to 411 kilometers orbit, the highest at which a Salyut had operated. This was because no more progress flights were planned for 1979 and the Salyut's propulsion system was suspect, so the decision was to raise the station's orbit as high as possible before the crew returned to Earth. Propellant was transferred by 17 July. When the progress craft undocked, the wire mesh parabolic telescope was unfurled. A camera aboard the tanker beamed the scene to Earth. The radio telescope was deployed out the rear docking port, but results proved disappointing and the cosmonauts ejected it on August 9. Trouble happened again when the antenna became snared on the port, forcing the tired cosmonauts to perform an unscheduled spacewalk on 15 August to cut it loose. Ryman, attached to a tether, used hand rails to get to the antenna and cut it away. Then he and Lyakov retrieved a materials experiment left on the station's exterior. Because the spacewalk was so late in the mission, the crew was apprehensive as they were not in the best physical condition to carry it out, so they left letters in the Soyuz return vehicle in case they did not survive. They packed several experiments in Soyuz 34 and departed the space station 19 August, re-entering two days later and landing 170 km southeast of Jaskazgan. Because the cosmonauts were so weakened from six months in zero gravity a bouquet of flowers presented to them reportedly felt like a ton of bricks. A system of slides and chutes had to be deployed for them to exit the Soyuz descent module. Lyakov lost 5.5 kilograms during the flight Ryuman's weight was the same and both experienced a 20% reduction in lower leg volume. They recovered in seven days, several days faster than expected. The mission had lasted 175 days, a new endurance record surpassing the 139-day mission by the Soyuz 29 crew in 1978. <laughs> 